A particular status has been given to specific armed groups. Those that represent a people engaged in armed conflict as defined under Article 1 of Additional Protocol 1. That is, armed conflicts in which peoples are fighting against colonial domination and alien occupation and against racist regimes in the exercise of their right to self-determination. Those armed conflicts will be defined in detail in the next chapter when considering the scope of application of IHL. They mainly refer to struggles for national liberation conducted against colonial powers, such as the struggle which led to the independence of Angola in 1975. What matters here is not to note that Additional Protocol 1 and all the provisions of the Geneva Conventions are binding upon those armed groups whose struggle is considered as an international armed conflict by the Protocol. This raises the question of how such groups may be bound since they cannot ratify IHL treaties. Additional Protocol 1, in particular Article 96, actually provides for a specific mechanism through which those groups may commit themselves to be bound by the Protocol and the Geneva Conventions. They must address a unilateral declaration to the depository of the Protocol, in which they undertake to apply the Geneva Conventions and this Protocol in relation to a specific conflict in which they are involved. In practice, many of such declarations have been made. However, they are only valid and trigger the application of the Geneva Conventions and the Additional Protocol 1 if the states involved in the wars of national liberation have ratified the protocol. This was, of course, not the case. During decolonization, Article 96 therefore remained a dead letter. It is only recently that a declaration made on the basis of Article 96 was accepted by the depository of the protocol. That declaration is the one made on the 21st of June in 2015 by the Polisario Front, acting on behalf of the people of Western Sahara, a former colonial people currently occupied by Morocco. The declaration was accepted because Morocco ratified the protocol in 2011. Some national liberation movements whose struggle had lasted for years used another strategy to make the Geneva Conventions applicable to the armed conflict in which they were involved. They invoked a particular interpretation of Common Article 2 to the Geneva Conventions. This article provides that the powers party to the Conventions shall be bound by these Conventions in relation to the power which is not party, if the latter accepts and applies the provisions thereof. As this article does not refer to states, but only to powers, some national liberation movements have assimilated themselves to such a power, not party to the conventions. And they have argued that these conventions were applicable to the conflict in which they were involved, since they accepted the application thereof.